Get up on what's trending. Get up! You're listening to the Front Page Report on HBCU Pulse Radio. Welcome back to HBCU Pulse Radio here on SiriusXM, where we're talking about if the state government is trying to take over our state HBCUs. And a perfect situation to bring up in this topic is what occurred with Tennessee State University. So Tennessee State University students and alumni protested outside of the state capitol on February the 23rd, and the peaceful gathering was in response to a report by the state comptroller's office alleging that the Nashville-based HBCU was fiscally irresponsible. Now, the report presented 12 policy recommendations, including placing the university under the Tennessee Board of Regents and changing university leadership. On February the 28th, the Comptroller's Office shared the findings of their report in a joint Senate session. And in that Senate session, the state leaders on the subcommittee voted to allow the Board of Trustees to continue their operations for another year, which means that the university leadership will stay intact for another year. So it seems as if the battle is over and the situation is won, but I have Tiara Thomas, who is a Tennessee State University alumna and an HBCU Pulse political correspondent that is saying that the fight is far from over. Tiara, how are you doing today? I'm good, Randall. How are you? I want to start with this. So for those that didn't know, you were student trustee for two years at Tennessee State University. So I want you to tell us about what is the function of the University Board of Trustees and also what you did as student trustee. Yeah, absolutely. So I served, like you said, two terms on our Board of Trustees. Um, the Board of Trustees under the 2017 Focus Act, which I'll give a little history here. In Tennessee, in 2017, they passed a um, bill that allowed four-year public institutions to be able to govern themselves through a board of trustees. Um, Those trustees boards are made up of 10 members, two include one, which was myself, the student trustee, as well as a faculty trustee, and then eight other members that will be appointed by the governor and go through an appointment process with the Tennessee State Legislature. And so the board of trustees has the ability to provide direct oversight of the governance of the university, as well as be the direct governing um, body over the president of that university. And so we look at everything from budget to programs and um, new programs that you wanna get rid of, new programs that you might want to look into for the future. We look into capital projects um, and the overall management and governing of the university and to make sure that the university remains afloat. I want you just to break down what's been going on with Tennessee State and the state legislator. Uh, You brought my attention to this because I did not know the severity of it. I heard about it. You know, I saw what was going on, but then I saw your tweets and I saw how severe the situation was. Could you walk us through what went on with Tennessee State and the Tennessee State legislator? For the past couple of weeks, TSU has been really putting themselves on the forefront to try to protect our ability to self-govern ourselves through our board of trustees. Um, That ability to govern ourselves was threatened by the state legislator here in Tennessee um, with the possibility to be taken over by a state agency called the Tennessee Board of Regents, which currently only governs the Tennessee technical colleges and community colleges. So we would be the only four-year public institution that would be under this system um, had the state decided to take over TSU. So, Tierra, the basis of this whole situation is based on the Tennessee State Comptroller's Office report about TSU. So could you break down for us, like, what was in that report and also why it's important? So the Comptroller's main job is just to make sure that all agencies in the state um, are operating efficiently. And so when it came to TSU, we like everyone else in the country, had an uptick in in enrollment. And so we had to ask the state for permission to lease out some hotels and some off-campus housing. And so that pretty much put us on the radar with the Republican legislature. Um, I don't know if you really remember in November, there was a viral video that went around with one of the legislators in Tennessee that asked Dr. Glover, why, basically, why do all the Black kids want to go to TSU And are you aware that you're taking away from the diversity and equity and inclusion efforts from other universities such as UT? Which, I mean, we all know the answer to that question. Of course, the Black kids want to go to the HBCU over UT. But in hindsight to that question, um, 
the comptroller began to investigate TSU's ability to manage um, increased enrollment and also to manage their ability to plan for the future of their housing crisis, quote unquote. Um, and so in, in essence, they were just questioning TSU's overall ability to govern itself and to be able to make sound decisions to make the institution or the government agencies, they would call it, um, run effectively and smoothly. And so in the comptroller's report, it's an 82 page report, it's very long. Um, they investigated students, they investigated all 10 members of the board of trustees, different, different faculty. They, um, they focused in on housing, our future housing plans. They focused on scholarships. They focused on our budget, um, how our board operates as well as a little bit of student satisfaction. So um, it's very important if it wasn't, seems like what we would call picking on TSU. I think reports like that are very important for all state agencies if you're looking at it from an organizational level to make sure they are running smoothly. But when you have a situation like TSU, you should be applauding the university for increasing enrollment and doing all that you can to make sure that your only public institution in the city of Nashville is equitable and accessible for all students and doing everything that you can to support TSU. And in hindsight, we were being reprimanded for growing and thriving. So one of the big things that was talked about from TSU alum is the whole entire notion of Tennessee State being moved under the Tennessee Board of Regents. So why is that a bad thing? Because I want to talk about like why this is bad so folks can understand why Tennessee State alumni were upset and were fighting against the notion of moving under the Board of Regents. So what is the Tennessee Board of Regents and why would it be bad for Tennessee State to move under the Board of Regents? The Tennessee Board of Regents is the state's board of trustees for all community colleges and technical colleges in the state. Prior to 2017 and the FOCUS Act, all four-year institutions, technical colleges, and community colleges were governed by TBR. TBR, like I said, after 2017, no longer governs four-year universities, including Tennessee State, and gave them the ability to form their own boards. Um, and so they can govern themselves. Now, TSU has solicited the, um, the help of TBR to help them with facilities management, capital projects from the state, and helping them do things on a larger scale, but we still run our university the way our board of trustees decides to run it. Um, so the fear would be going under the Tennessee Board of Regents at this point in 2023 would raise a couple concerns. Um, one being that, again, they only govern community colleges and technical colleges and have been since 2017. So we are not sure that they even have the knowledge base, the capacity to even handle a four-year institution and um, Tennessee State University. Um, secondly, the TBR is ran by the state. So essentially that's where you get that TSU is being overtaken by the state context because it, the TBR is a state agency and it is ran by the state and reports to the state. Um, and that would be pretty much just our fear of not being able to govern ourselves and losing the essence of what we feel like is our HBCU and um, having the ability to not know when will we get our ability to govern ourselves back? How long will we stay under TBR? What changes are they gonna make? Because when you start looking at things like them changing tuition or um, admission requirements, you start looking at those populations again of black students who are first generation grad student, I mean, grad, um, first generation college students or in low income families who, if they raise tuition, might not be able to afford TSU anymore or um, admission standards to now they've making TSU as hard to get into as a UT. So we have to consider things like that that makes our, TS, our TSU, our HBCU, the safe place for black and brown students in the state. So why does it seem as if the Board of Trustees has drawn the ire of the Comptroller's Office and the Tennessee State Legislature? Okay, so based off of our power structure in Tennessee, the Board of Trustees, like I mentioned, is appointed and approved by the Tennessee State Legislature and the Governor of Tennessee. So 
every so often the board of trustees at any four-year institution that is public in Tennessee has to go through what they call a sunset hearing. The sunset hearing allows for the state legislature to assess the effectiveness of the board, um, the growth, and you know just the positive aspects going along with the board under that board of trustees. And then each hearing, each sunset hearing, the the legislature decides if they are going to extend or not extend the terms of the current board of trustees. So in this case, our sunset hearing for our board of trustees was um, was last week, which is what we saw going on um, on Twitter and everything. And so along with that sunset hearing, we had a special audit done last starting last semester when our university saw record enrollment and also some housing challenges around that record enrollment. And so we kind of had a double whammy against us. And so they used that audit to determine if we were going to extend our board or not. And um, through all of that, they decided ultimately that they would give our board one more year to operate and then we would do our sunset hearing all over again. So we reported back on HBCU Pulse in January that Tennessee State University got a $250 million money allocation from Governor Bill Lee that was billed as an investment. And we know it's not an investment, it's a repayment because Tennessee State University is owed $544 million based on the findings of the Tennessee Office of Legislative and Budget Analysis. So I want to know, is the money allocation of that $250 million, is this correlated to this comptroller's report and the Tennessee State Legislator trying to put Tennessee State under the Board of Regents? Even though this audit report and this overview of our Board of Trustees is mainly based on housing and housing challenges, we cannot use any of those funds for housing or any revenue-based buildings, which would be dorms that are based on enrollment, which bring in tuition. So no. That $250 million doesn't have much to do with this, even though you would hear most people say, if we had the money that the state owed us, we wouldn't be in this predicament. Yes and no, but in this particular situation, there's not much that that $250 million, based off the requirements for that money, would do to help this situation. As an alumni, especially a young alumni that is on social media, that's seeing what's going on, and that's also connected, Like, how did you feel when you first heard about this issue being raised and about the comptroller's report and their findings? Being an HBCU alum, not just a TSU alum, I think it raises a lot of questions for um, what Republicans in general are trying to do with our HBCUs. Because even though um, we're talking about Tennessee State right now, we've seen similar situations with other universities around the country um, dealing with their Republican governance. And we're always under attack. And so for that to be hit hitting home with my university, um, it caused me to really kind of like dig deep into what is it that's really going on. And I wish I could tell you what the game plan is. Um, as Black people, we know that there's always some aim for um, our racial counterparts to knock us down. So it could be a multitude of things because TSU is thriving right now. We have a record enrollment. All of our HBCUs are thriving right now, especially after COVID, after the George Floyd situation, when a lot of Black students are starting to come back to HBCUs. Um, it just heart, it's just heartbreaking that we're continually in 2023 to be fighting for the same institutions that were on our safe place. These are our safe places, and they're trying to even take our safe places away. So it's almost like, okay, if they take over TSU, where else do Black children in Tennessee have to go? Because we're thinking about children who are either first generation college students, they're in low income families, they can't afford to go to any other institution. And then TSU is the only public HBCU in Tennessee. So when you're looking at state funds such as um, the Tennessee Promise or any other types of state um, led financial aid, they can't take that to, a, to any other university or that might not be as accepted or they might not get as much funding for a FISC or a LANE um, that they would for a TSU. I think that's important to speak about because that shows why HBCUs are needed because it gives other options to black and brown children. So like, do you think that this move from the Tennessee state legislator, the comptroller's report, and really the process that happened, do you believe that this is going to cause a precedent around the nation for other state HBCUs? 
Absolutely. We see situations like this happen all the time. And let's just take HBCUs out of it for a minute. Let's think about what's being done across the country about abortion or gay marriage rights. Um, It starts in one state and then it seems like every other red state does the exact same thing. So they're planning amongst themselves outside of the scope of the American eye to do things like this. And I think it's time for HBCUs to take a look at what's happening with the FAMU, with the TSU, with the Jackson State, and really start probably planning amongst themselves at some of these conferences about how do we protect our HBCUs? Because as Black people, we have to work two, three times as hard to be just as good as some of our racial counterparts. And I think one thing that's extremely important, and I'm very big on accountability, our HBCUs are great. But we all know coming from an HBCU, there are some things that could be so much better. And so when you're under the microscope of especially a red state, you really have to make sure that you have all of your ducks in a row. We can't give them an excuse to to even consider taking us over. All of our finances have to be perfect. Our enrollment has to be clean cut. Everything has to be together. And we have to do a better job as HBCUs to make sure that we're not even in consideration for some of these things. Um, Even though some of us are underfunded or we are lacking some resources, our communities and for generations, Black people have been making a lot out of nothing. And so we can't allow that we're in 2023 now, we're in a different generation to take over because in their eyes, we're still the same Black people with nothing, no education and no promise for this country. And um, we can't take advantage of that just because we're in a different generation. So the state legislators on the subcommittee voted to allow the Board of Trustees to continue their operations for another year. Is this really a win for Tennessee State? And what needs to take place within this next year for this situation with the state legislator to be properly and fully handled so we can move on? I would definitely say it's a win for TSU. Um, One, because if you look at the policy recommendations, we got one of the better options. I mean, we were scared of policy one and two, which was to either place us under the Board of Regents or to completely vacate our Board of Trustees completely. Um, And so for us to even still have a Board of Trustees, not even be under the consideration of TBR, I think that that's a huge win for us. Now in this next year, everything that that Comptroller report had to say about TSU, we have a year to try to fix that Um, because Like I said, sunset hearings are routine. So you don't get to choose if they renew your board for a year, eight years, six months. You have to make sure that with every time that they give you before your next sunset hearing that you're ready to go and you go in with with no questions asked. And so we'll do this process again in a year. Um, We might not have a comptroller's report Um, because this comptroller's report was a special audit that was done based on our um, housing situation. Um, So we might not have that challenge, but we will come against um, another sunset hearing in a year. And so um, we really have to make sure that we're ready to go for that. Tiara, it's always a pleasure to have you on. Where can we find you on social media? You can follow me on Instagram at tthomas with four S's and two underscores.